What are you doing? Hey. Hey. Oh, you're walking just, over. You're just get in. Get in. <laughs> stay, stay in. You're walking over there. <laughs> That would take something to pack that up. Rock and roll, big boss. Kodiak Island, what an amazing place. We saw four brown bear this morning already. A lot of interesting wildlife even if you're not a hunter or a fisherman it's a place that you want to come and just really appreciate what this country has lots of salmon you can see how they're decaying most of these are silvers there's one floating down but you can just see them stacked up dead all along the shoreline Everybody, I just shot my first black tailed buck here in Alaska. It looked like a good shot, so we're gonna go down and see what happened. I'm pretty excited, I can tell you that much. We don't have a lot of time, we gotta get this thing, you know, get down to it and get it out of here because we only have an hour before the boat gets here and we're up. We're a long ways away, so it's gonna be a scramble. I think he was standing like right here. It's a big body deer. Black tail don't get nearly as big a rack. It's like a hundred inch black tail is a huge black tail. Hey, I'm really happy. It's my first one. I was here last year. Never had an opportunity to shoot at a black tail as far as a decent buck. And I'm more than content with this one. Got a lot of stuff to do. We gotta get this thing gutted out. The big problem is too, is that you gotta worry about brown bears. So we gotta get this thing gutted out and get it out of here fast. It's always good to see the boat coming, especially when you're hungry, thirsty. 
and one will lay down for me. Do you get thirsty, Larry? I don't get too thirsty. Okay. For some reason, I didn't bring any water bottles, which I wasn't quite smart enough for. But uh, I'm gonna suffer. Yep, thanks, Nick. What a cool place to be, I'll tell you that. Yesterday was a pretty successful day. We got up to almost 2,000 feet and uh, ended up seeing 15 different deer, two bucks. Uh, Michael is waiting for a big one. So my legs are stiff, my body's stiff, but it feels damn good. Are you looking at anything different today, Michael? We're constantly discussing the best strategy. How quickly do we want to get up on top where we can actually see something versus working our way up there as we and try to spot something on the way up. You just gotta find the right one. I know. You wanna talk about a workout? I think I'm gonna take myself back to no sun drops or maybe one a week. You look like you're doing as much climbing as you were walking. Crawling, I mean, Bro, I you're crawling. Doing some crawling. I didn't think that you would notice it because you were in front of me that I was actually crawling. <laughs> but our foot takes when the incline is like that. Center of gravity, folks, is everything, right? This is so far we've climbed a pretty this morning. We're up probably about 600 feet, maybe 800. But what we really want to do is we want to try to get up all the way up to there, look down, and work our way back. It's always better to look down at everything. Just spotted a few deer on the other side of that ridge. We're going to try to sneak up on them. down nice job well Michael we finally found him no blood he had he had one little spot of blood this is the worst combination of cover and steepness and thorns I've ever been in I mean it's it was absolutely it was frustrating and it was miserable I mean I feel, I feel like we didn't cover even that much ground in two, two and a half hours. Right, and the two things, it's a good thing we took a playback finally on the camera, and the other part was the magpie. Yeah, yeah we were sitting there and I said, that magpie is doing a weird call and it had landed right over the deer. And you know, you gotta pay attention to the woods. Sometimes it'll tell you what's going on. And I think, so that gave me some idea that maybe he was in there and I, I actually think the bird might have landed on him. We're, I don't know, we're three miles, four miles, five miles. And I mean, I don't know how you judge miles when you're going up and down this terrain and it's, you know, gets so high. We're up at about 1800 feet and, uh, you know, we got to get back down. And I'll tell you the stuff we came up this morning uh, was extremely steep. Like, you know, you don't think about it a lot when you're climbing. For me, at least, you think about it a lot more when you're going back down. I am a little bit afraid of heights. Um, and you never really think about it till again, till you get up here and you're on top and you got to come back down this, this, you know, these mountains. It's just uh, when you're looking straight down and there's no, there was absolutely no trees, no shrubs, no bushes at all for, you know, half a mile. And boy, if you lose, lose grip, you're not, there's nothing to stop you. We're going to process this animal as far as right. we're going to cut it up out here in the field. Right. What is the law? Alaska has extremely strict I think that what they call so, wanton, wanton waste wall, yes. where you got to you got to utilize all the meat. Right. So you got to pull the rib meat out. You were just telling me yep. that. You got to take everything brisket. You yep. know, what do, what do a lot of guys leave? You got to take the lower leg or the shank meat. You got to take the neck. You got to take the brisket. You got to take ribs. Um, of course, you got to take the shoulders and the hind quarters. Yep. Um, 
but I mean, you got it in here in Alaska. You got to take everything. Otherwise, you're being deep trouble. Right. You're, uh, you know, <laughs> otherwise you're breaking the law. We'll quarter it and throw it in bags. I'll use plastic bags, and then I use this game bag, a reusable game bag, kind of to support the plastic bag, so it doesn't tear open. Use the plastic lined with plastic, so that I'm not getting blood all over our packs. Right. So I'll set up two bags like this. A heavy one for Larry and then a lighter one for me. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. I appreciate that. <laughs> right. And then Just we'll save uh, a slurp of water for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll get them out of here. My job right now is basically to uh, help Michael in every which way I can. And the other part is to watch out for brown bears. When you start gutting animals, it's just amazing. Again, like we're talking about deer, you know, how they just appear out of nowhere. Well, a bear is obviously slightly bigger than these deer and they still just come out of nowhere. Like how did that bear ever get so close to us so fast? Now, the thing I like is that the wind is actually going up the hill, you know, so we're if the wind was going down in this valley, I would be spooked right now. Right. Because I mean, they could come up through these tag alders and be on you in a second if they were smelling, spelling that deer. And this thing's a little bit bloated already because it took us a couple hours to find them. So I'd be a little bit nervous, but I like that the wind is blowing up the hill. Because I don't think there's a bear that's going to come up over the hill. I'm but hoping not. I'm looking at my sundial and I'm saying it's 540, so I could be wrong. But this is, when you talk about field dressing, there is nothing left on that deer at all. Uh, we're going to obviously take the head out of here too. And uh, that's all that's left on that carcass right there. Never go out in the field without them. You know, you were talking before about these packs and getting more weight on your hips and I really didn't think a lot about it till again this is the first time I've ever packed out an animal and uh, still until I started going here and you realize like the way my pack is designed a lot of this weight is on my shoulders and every time I step I just stepped into a rut back there and I actually felt my knee kind of buckle and it could have been a disaster if a big part about it is in is that you want to pack that, that the meat down as low as you can get it. You want to get it low and tight your back. You know, you want all the light stuff up high and, and outside the meat. You want to get all the, you know, meat's dense. You want to get it all real low and tight to your back. Um, but I just take that overnight bag and they make something called a meat strap. And all, that's all I have on here is a meat strap. And then I just use a small, I actually use our Eskimo wide mouth bag. So that keeps everything waterproof. I can roll that up like a dry bag and then everything's gonna be waterproof. And it's just, a, it's relatively lightweight. So I can just put the stuff in there to kind of secure it with that, what they call a meat strap. Um, so that I'm not carrying a bunch of extra weight. You know, what are what's, what would you like to see the next two days? Obviously we're done hunting and you know being with the transporter that we're with now we have a few options we we kind of optioned out about the duck hunting because it's a little early in the year but the fishing interests you and it definitely interests me yeah so now we can we can fish as part of the deal a lot of most of these lodges that do uh deer hunts also offer fishing if you get tagged out early or if you just want to go fishing for one day but hopefully the weather's like this because the weather has been absolutely right. killer hasn't been that great actually for the deer hunting it all this great weather all these deer you know it seems that they're i mean maybe it's just because they're more visible up on top but man are there it seems like most of the deer are up top the challenge really was to try to get up high as fast as you could and yep. it took us till just after 11 to get yep. up there and i hours. felt like we were moving pretty good yeah i mean that was that was the most brutal climb we've done all week all right let's see if we can get down before the transport hits yeah. the beach buddy well, we got about two hours all right let's oh that's right. plenty let's do her you know i don't know about i thought going up was bad but i think coming down is just as bad it's not it's not worse right because you're trying to like, i'm grabbing these branches break i'm gonna do that. oh i hurt my ribs what a guy won't do to have a little fun. Good thing I'm only 54. We did it. Unbelievable. Three days of just absolutely climb, climb, climb. Two black tail down. That was the best workout that you could ever imagine, for sure, on that. No broken bones, right? Yep. Uh, life is good. Sitting on a rock in Larson Bay. I'm whooped. Sleep like a baby. 
How much was Alaska purchased for from Russia in 1867? It's, it's almost like the days when you had a Harley and you were waving to the guy on a bike. You see another warrior on the water, you just get a good feel. First class all the way from the people that ride them to the people that make them. They do such a nice job with communication. They'll pick up the phone anytime. It's, it's really almost a friendship. You could be in any state and when somebody with a warrior drives by you, you get that honk, that beat. You're truly part of a family and there's nothing like it. How much was Alaska purchased for from Russia in 1867? The purchase price was set at 7.2 million, or about 125 million today. For reference, that's about two cents per acre. Talk about a good deal. All right, so here we've got some duck skewers. It's duck thigh and breast marinated in our teriyaki marinade that we sell here in the store. And I've just got some thyme, salt, and pepper on there to give it a little bit more flavor. Three to four minutes per side, and then we're gonna take them off the direct heat and let them finish until they're up to temp on the indirect heat. We want them to finish about 160 degrees. Um, I should mention that with the duck breast, some people prefer it medium rare. Um, with the thigh and stuff, I like to cook that up to well done, just so you know it's good to go. Let them rest for two or three minutes just so those juices can build back up in there. And then we'll plate them up and give them a taste. I'm gonna take uh, some sesame seeds, just sprinkle those over top. Gives them a nice little crunch and a little bit more flavor. And then just hit them with a little parsley just to give it some color. All right, now we're gonna try our duck skewers here. There we are, my friend. Ooh, there you go, Mike. Michael. That's what we're looking for. Ooh, that's a good one, too. Really good one. Nice job. Michael, you're doing a really good job. Yes, I think your expertise and fishing halibut is second to none. Well, yesterday you're shooting blacktail. Today you're catching halibut and cod. Not, not a bad way to live life. Work hard, play hard, that's a good philosophy. Michael, you lost just a giant a couple minutes ago. You got another good fish on? It doesn't feel like as big as the last one. No? No, it still feels like a good fish. This fishing's been amazing. We haven't been out here that long. No. Can't see him quite yet. Any second, huh? Yeah, I've never seen these. These are cool. Come on, halibut man. Halibut. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Yup. Yup. I think it's a halibut.
Nice job. Nice job. That's a nice fish. Big old fatty. 280 feet. Oh, didn't see you there. As you can see behind me, winter's already kind of here in Wisconsin and we're gearing up for ice fishing. If you want to see some more of the behind the scenes stuff and how we're getting ready for that, make sure you follow us on social media. Larry's out deer hunting right now, but we still want to take the time to thank all of our military veterans, paramedics, firefighters, and no doubt all of our police officers. It's a great day to be alive. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week. That deep breathing is not a bear, it's just me. Hey, are you full of fish? Hey, you! These trips are really fun, I'll tell you what. Get all that sun drop out of your system. <laughs> you know what the funny part is? I, I almost asked bear, I almost asked him and gave him money to get some, some soda, but I'm glad I did because I'm not drinking any soda this week. I got a little whiskey I want to mix it with soda while we get one. <laughs>